Now we are going to serve you European masala chai, just that it will get you high. Hello everyone. First of all, very warm season's greetings in this cold and dark, gloomy December. I was walking through the city center yesterday where there used to be Christmas markets and I suddenly started to miss the smell of Christmas, basically sugar and cinnamon. But one of the things that I missed the most about Christmas markets was meeting friends and having some glue wine or mulled wine. Mulled wine is a word that I think used mostly in America, but here we call it glue wine in Germany. And uh, believe me, it differs from one stall to the other. You might actually have a favorite that you will go to for years. And what makes each one of them different is the spice blend that they use or the type of wine that they're using, the temperature at which they serve it, and also the cup or the mug, even that makes a difference. Well, we'll talk about how to make glue wine, but before that, I want to show you how to make a very simple non-alcoholic version of a nice Christmas drink, which kids can actually enjoy. And if you are a person who doesn't enjoy alcohol or wine, even you can enjoy this in one of your Christmas parties or the small Christmas parties during these extraordinary times. Well, you do have a good reason now not to drink wine. You can always say that I'm wearing a mask and I don't want to take it off. So you can stay away from it and just hold a glass. The first one is very easy. It's derived from the traditional Russian compote, which will be made with uh, frozen berries. We don't have berries in winter. They look pretty much like this. These are organic and pretty simple reason for that is because you can't really wash them. The moment you wash them, you'll see a lot of good stuff going away. So all you have to do is unpack these frozen berries and let it defrost on its own. Leave it at room temperature, come back in an hour, and then you will have this um, mix which is defrosted and it's ready. So I'm going to just add it to a carafe. You can have, add it in a mug. It doesn't have to be transparent, but it looks nice. Kids are like, okay, what's that? And then you can say, okay, Santa gave it so that you become Santa one day. You can see like when I've defrosted it, so much of its juice has just kind of come out. You can add warm water to this and just let the kids enjoy this as it is. It really depends on your kid. I can say for sure that my kid loves cardamom. I put cardamom in anything and she will eat it. She actually eats cardamom as it is. So it depends on you and on your child. If you prefer spices, then you can add some spices. And spices, if you let them soak inside the juice or water for a very long time, it can overtake the flavor and it might become unpleasant. So you can use a bag like this. And the only spice that I would recommend that you can add here is cinnamon. We'll just take about a quarter of it, not a lot. We don't want uh, the flavor of cinnamon to overtake it, but yet it has to taste like Christmas, not like a summer drink, summer drink that's warm. So we'll just add this and on this, if you want, you can add some cloves and then just add this, close it. And the reason I'm using this bag is because it's easy to take it out. Then you don't have to fish out all the cloves and you don't want to expect tantrums when they find one clove in their glass. So we'll drop this. We can also add some zest from a nice orange just to make it look nice and you can squeeze some orange juice into it and drop in the pulp as well just to squeeze it to make it soft the water which we'll add will anyway kind of give that flavor so we have the blend ready here you can make it sweet by adding some sweetener now it depends on what kind of sweetener you have and it depends on what kind of sweetener you prefer. So we are going to add some water. It's not very hot boiling water. It's just at about 60 to 70 degrees. And we we'll leave it like this for some time. Now you might wonder that if this drink is going to be served warm, why did I make it in a carafe? That's so that I can demonstrate to you. Otherwise I would make it in a pot. So. You can warm it according to your needs and then add the sweetener. If you're using honey especially, then add it at the end when you have already served it in a cup. 
but if you have other sweeteners like jaggery or uh, maple syrup then you can even cook with it so we'll let all the ingredients settle down we will let it uh, absorb all the flavor and then you can serve it now you have this dried aronia berries that are available in the market it's a good time that you can even um, add them to the drink you can add even uh, juniper berries it's a good time to introduce new ingredients new interesting stuff and when i take it closer trust me it smells divine and while nobody is watching me maybe you not my kid maybe i can try and see how it is mm it actually tastes like a non alcoholic wine even looks like it right you can filter it you can even give it with the pulp and the result is something that i'm very pleased with so try it out hmm it really tastes like wine actually so maybe this is what they serve to us all along and we think like we're drinking blue wine and we get drunk so now is the time to get to the real stuff thinking about glue wine itself is making me so happy this was a time you know like during this christmas you go to the market meet your old friends and then just enjoy a cup or two of glue wine now remember glue wine is something that you don't get drunk on it's something that's to be enjoyed so drink it slowly like you drink your tea okay don't take shots of it and don't take shots in between most people do that but then you get into kind of like okay it's keeping you warm and then you kind of keep getting drunk and then you're home completely wasted one thing you need to know is that glue wine should not be made with very cheap inexpensive and very bad quality wine okay many people have that kind of an attitude that okay just take the cheapest 2 euro wine from the shop which tastes like really bad bitter gives you a hangover the next day and make glue wine out of it if you do that you will have even more worse hangover the next day so choose your favorite red wine we are talking about the glue wine made with the red wine you can also make it with white wine and the most recommended type of red wine that you need to use for this type of glue wine is something that's on the sweeter side something that's not too dry and something that's not too bitter okay and don't waste your expensive 100 dollar wine bottle on this that has its own place and time to enjoy those kind of wines I will leave the discussion in the comment section open for you to decide what kind of wine you are using or what kind of wine you are familiar with that I am talking about because every country will have its own different version and name of the wine that it's using the wine that I was getting in South Africa I don't get it in Germany and vice versa okay enough about wine now let's talk about the spices glue wine is made special when we add spices to it if you just warm the wine and drink it it will really taste bad so the most important spice of christmas or glue wine is cinnamon this is cinnamon this is not cassia cassia is slightly bitter so avoid using cassia stick this is cinnamon it's on a much sweeter much more subtle note you have nutmeg we'll have to grate it you just don't throw nutmeg and boil the wine with it and also don't boil the wine we'll talk about it later we'll add some cardamom this is very optional you don't have to add it if you don't like the flavor of it but this will give you a very nice strong aroma and of course star anise seed but when i said of course most of the glue wine recipes will have it but you can avoid it if you don't have it you can really avoid it you can add some cloves and uh, clove is kind of something that will make it really strong the flavor of cinnamon will be brought up with the addition of clove the strength of it and rosemary to just give some more flavor to it but this is also optional most recipes do not even use rosemary now you can also add ginger just cut them into juliennes and add it to the wine some of the other things that you will need to make this glue wine is uh, some sweetener i am using jaggery some 50 grams of jaggery for about 750 ml of wine you can reduce it or you can even increase it but if you don't have jaggery and you're going to use some brown sugar then you might have to use a little bit more jaggery is more concentrated in its sweetness it's also much more healthier than a simple white sugar or the brown sugar that you get we'll also add some orange zest 
Uh, if you don't have it, you can also add some lemon zest. This will give some kind of a bitterness. You see, you're creating a complex flavor here with some sweet, with some spices, with some bitterness from the zest and something interesting here. To balance all the flavor, we'll add some citrus to it. We'll take the orange. Once we have taken the zest out, we'll just take this orange that's peeled, cut into small cubes and we'll add it at the end. Remember, the wine that you use or the wine that you choose, you have to make sure that you taste it before you make glue wine out of it. If you make a bad glue wine, there's no way coming back from it, okay? And so try to make one batch first, see that if it suits you, if the wine is good enough, then make like 10 liters of glue wine. Don't start with 10 liters of glue wine without knowing the wine itself. When I'm talking sweet, sweet, sweet wine, it's not like wine with a sugar syrup or something. It's just that it's not dry, okay? So if you go to a shop and you say sweet wine, sweet wine, they'll give you a bottle of a port wine. Um, just say a wine that's not too dry. So I'm just going to smell it. I always like to do that. It may not be the right way of smelling it, but at least it makes me feel good. Hmm, it's nice, kind of sour and not very dry. We'll just add maybe one or two teaspoons of uh, water, not much, and then we will cook the jaggery, okay? And the reason I'm saying cook the jaggery, it's just to make a nice syrup out of it. Now, some people might say, what's wrong in using sugar, you know? Like it's just Christmas, just one time. Well, when you have made a habit not to eat sugar for a very long time, Eating sugar can actually make you feel very bad. So just stick to it and find your alternatives. And you can be eating very healthy or drinking very healthy even during festive seasons, okay? It's no excuse for you to turn back into all bad habits and then say, okay, there's no way coming back or feel guilty for the rest of the week. So we'll just make the sugar syrup. Enough of coaching here. You can already see that the jaggery is kind of turning into a nice syrup. Just keep mixing it so that it doesn't burn. We don't want to make a thick syrup, so even if you end up adding too much water, it's fine. And while this is happening, we can add the orange zest that we had prepared earlier. And you can already start adding the spice. So I'll just take the cinnamon as it is. You can break it maybe. And then we'll add the star anise seed. I've taken about a teaspoon of cloves. We don't want too much of it. It will give a very biting feeling at the back of your tongue. And then we'll take some cardamom. We'll try to open it just by crushing it. You can use a mortar pestle and just open it up. And then we'll add. When you do this, the flavor will spread out even more nicely. We'll add nutmeg more towards the end, not now. Some people cook the wine and when you do it for a very long time, it will turn bitter and will also give you a kind of hangover. So we don't want to cook the wine itself for a very long time. Also, you don't want to boil the wine. Remember that you just have to keep it at around 70 degrees. Now you don't have a thermometer all the time. So what you need to do is just reduce the flame to a medium or medium low and then just add the wine. And when it just starts to vaporize a little bit, you see some tiny amount of vapor. That's the time when you switch it off and let it cool down. And then the flavor will be absorbed over time. This is not a very long process, so you can actually make it just a few minutes before you serve it, like 30 minutes or something, let the flavor sink in, then warm the wine slightly again and then serve it. You can already see how nicely the lemon zest and all the spices have started to infuse into each other and I can already feel the aroma. It's really nice. And here is when you also can add ginger, if you like. I don't really like the flavor of ginger in my wine, so I don't add it. Kind of makes it too bitter. And now is the time when we will add uh, some nutmeg. We'll grate it into it. Not a lot, about a quarter of it, okay? 
depends on the size of the nutmeg though but you can say like half a teaspoon of nutmeg powder if you are using the nutmeg powder yeah the flame is already now at low to medium we can cool it down further a little bit so that the wine doesn't start to burn you need to be careful if you are using hot plate like me okay the hot plate continues to remain hot even though you have reduced the temperature which is why i have added a slight amount of water to bring the temperature a little low so that i don't burn the initial amount of uh, wine that goes into the pan and now we will add the wine i'm not a wine expert so i'll leave it out again i'm saying in the comment section i might look like somebody who indulges in a lot of alcohol actually i don't i keep it to very special moments like christmas or new year when i'm drinking just enough to feel good and then we will boil it for about 5 minutes at a low to medium temperature okay we don't want to boil it like we boil water at 100 degree centigrade all the alcohol will be gone and it will just taste like okay red water which is kind of bitter there's one more spice rosemary many people add it many people don't it's up to you so it's a very big stem i have so i'm just going to add about half of it and don't worry we'll use a sieve when we serve the blue wine so that all these spices and pieces of it do not end up into your mouth and we'll just let it cook for some time i may not be the best wine guy out here but spice is my domain that's where i really knock everybody out so if you want to learn more about spices and learn from me if you think that i'm entertaining enough then join my master class on happybellyfish.com and then next year by popular demand we also have scheduled live master classes on how we use spices how do you cook with them and learn more about it so i hope i'll see you in my virtual cooking studio very soon so you can slowly see now the steam has started to appear the fog over the wine completely forgot about this orange well not completely i like to add it towards the end so we'll just use our hands squeeze it a little bit some people add orange juice but those orange juice that you get in those cartons they are kind of bitter so it will ruin your glue wine so add fresh orange if possible now we are going to serve you european masala chai just that it will get you high and you can let one of the honey seeds float around in the cup and here's your tiny cozy merry christmas mm truly the real glue wine if you guys enjoyed our video then do subscribe and like and do not forget to check out our online master classes that we have at happybellyfish.com